Well, it's a made-in-Canada story that rivals the American dream. In 1954, a young man came to this country from his native Austria with a couple hundred bucks to his name. He built one of the world's most influential auto parts companies. But that same entrepreneur is now worried about the next generation, burdened by too much government debt and what he sees as an unfair tax system. Frank Stronach is the founder of Magna and a member of the Order of Canada, and he joins us now to share his outlook. Mr. Stronach, thanks for your time. We appreciate having you. Great to be with you. What, uh, if, ever, if I were to ask just generally what your outlook is for Canada's economy, what would you say? Well, we got to basically take a look, right? Uh, same if things don't function in your personal life or in business or in the country, we should know we got a problem. If you don't know you got a problem, you really got a problem. So it doesn't seem we, we have major problems and we don't, uh, it seems we keep on going. Just the budget uh, a few weeks ago, right, or a week ago, a 40 billion, right, deficit. Uh, every day which goes by, our interest payments for the debt are 150, 150 million. So when we look down the road, who's going to pay that back? What do we leave behind with our kids? A screwed up environment and enormous amount of debt. And every time you see a building going up, it's not a building where they make things, it's a warehouse where we import things. So we got to take a serious look. And so that that spending that we are seeing and, and saw in the in the federal budget, that opens the door to other companies from other countries having more of the Canadian economy market share? Is that, is that what you're saying to a certain degree? No, we don't make things anymore. You know, I, when I, about 50 years ago, when the first computers came on the market, the slogan was, if you got one of those computers, you could eliminate a total office floor of a large office building. Now, when I look around in the cities, there's 20 times more office buildings. They don't make products in there. It's regulations, overhead, and bur bureaucracy. So, uh, look, our bureaucracy has climbed uh, a few hundred percent over the last 30 years. But at the end of the day, um, the, 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 the spending that we have seen, um, in your opinion, at least through the, the recent budget, that was a missed opportunity to, to perhaps think more about the fiscal road ahead. Well, but it will happen next year the same and the year after. Mm. Till a major, major disaster will break in. I've never seen yet where the banks forgive money, right? And when technology is changing so much, um, even the company that you founded is constantly thinking about how technology impacts the auto industry. But when technology is changing our lives in such a dramatic way, how does that further complicate the story of Canada's economy, in your opinion? No, technology basically should mean that things are made easier, quicker, better. But, uh, but uh, the ordinary people don't benefit from it because when you look back about uh, 30 years ago or 20 years ago, uh, an ordinary couple could afford to buy a house, but not anymore. So the living standards are going back. So why is that? And I said before, our, 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 the interest payments on a daily basis are 150 million. Who's getting those monies? Mm. So the rich are getting richer, and the working class uh, don't make any, the living standards go backwards. I also referenced your views on our tax system. What is your primary concern there? The primary concern is it's not black and white. When you lead, very, very few people ever looked at the I, I, I looked at the tax code many times. It's a very thick book with thousands and thousands of regulations. And every, every regulation is more con, convoluted than the other one. So it's, it's totally, it's not, it's totally gray. What would you? Okay, no, no society can function unless the rules are clear cut, black and white. What would be um, your, your main message, whether it's to Ottawa or anyone who wants to find a more prosperous path 
for Canada going forward and, and for you know the next generation of entrepreneurs like yourself? Well, he, there's a few basics, right? Uh, what we got to do is, let's say, you, you cannot go in with the chainsaw and you cannot point the fingers. We all, we all the certain extent, we all the blame. But the fact is uh, that is enormous. So uh, I think uh, we got to get a few uh, basic uh, ground rules going. One would be we got to we got to have a plan where we where we can eliminate our debt. And the plan, let's say, would be every year we 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 eliminate the debt by five percent. So in twenty years we should have no more debt. I think that's a reasonable approach, and that could that would be doable. Okay, that's one thing. The next thing would be we gotta we gotta reduce the bureaucracy, and again we can do it in a very with no chains of operations. We can do it where we would say for the next year, ten years, we reduce the bureaucracy five percent a year. That means in ten years we only have half the bureaucracy. The next step would be we gotta we gotta we gotta uh, make our uh, income tax uh, income tax code or our rules. Uh, they should be understood. If we, if you finish high school, you should understand it. Okay, but nobody understands it. Okay, so uh, we that, that's got to be a black and white thing here. I could give you some examples, you know, when I run Magna, you know, we had, I uh, started in a garage, I built up a company with 170,000 employees. I had about 20 lawyers on the one side of my office. Uh, and on the other side of my office, I had about 20 financial experts. Sometimes when you ask them how, if we do XXX, how would that be treated? So the financial expert says, look, that's very complicated. After a week, they come back and say, it's great. We don't quite know, but there are specialists down down, which would know. And you go to the specialist, you get a big bill after two weeks, and they tell you they could go either this way or that way. So that's all the way on the tax system. You can, I've seen it over and over. So we gotta, re, we gotta have a black and white tax systems, which easily understood. Then the, the great problem is we know when the business doesn't function, you cannot feed the hungry, you cannot look after the most fragile people, the elderly, the sick, and the handicapped. So how does the business function? How does the economy function? The economy is driven by three forces, smart managers, hardworking employees, and investors. All three have a right to the outcome, which is profits. The message I want to get across, employees have a moral right to some of the profits they help to generate. So we got to take a look that the wide is climbing and climbing. So we need the law, what the law would have to say, 20% uh, of the profits would have to go to the employees. That means you could spread the gold, the other monies. The world has always been driven, uh, ruled by the golden rule. Who has the gold makes the rule. And the world is still driven by the golden rule, right? The question is, how can we dismantle the chains of domination? Not by a violent revolutions, by a and destructive revolutions, that's a no, no, no. We need a revolution of the mind. We got to take a look at the system and have a much fairer distribution of the monies generated. Hmm.